Welcome to the Steve and Bethany podcast. It's your weekly dose of hope, encouragement, and a whole lot of fun. All right, let's get to it. It's episode 25. Welcome into the Steve and Bethany Hope Cast. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are. We are grateful for you joining us this week. Already to 25. It's crazy. It really, really, really crazy. I did fully intend to bring in like muffins or some kind of cupcake or something. Yeah, but I know. But Caleb, I forgot. Caleb, our Jarvis Jr. over there, he uh, he took care of us. Yeah, he yeah. He took care really of us a couple did. weeks ago. He really did. Okay, so we got to get right to it because we've got a lot of stuff. Because okay, A lot of stuff. Let's just, let's just be transparent. Let's put it all out on the table for mm-hmm. everybody to know. We, we've taped the last couple of episodes in advance. Right. So we haven't seen one another in a couple of weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. And so we've got a lot of stuff to cover uh, to get to here in this episode. And to catch up on. Exactly. And here's the first thing. While you were gone, I uh, really wanted to focus in on thinking about the podcast, praying mm-hmm. about the podcast. What can we do better? What yeah, can we do? Yeah, make it better. And, and, and just kind of grow it and build more of a community. And I came across this creatively titled magazine that's out. It's called Podcast Magazine. <laughs> Jarvis Jr., can we see? Okay, this is what it looks like. I, we've got a link. If, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. If you're watching or you're just listening... The link is in there as well on the show notes. And you just click here. And what we ha- what they have here is a hot 50 chart, a hot 50 chart of podcasts. Mm-hmm. And they're solely based on people voting for them. So I got to thinking, you know, our numbers are very strong. If, if everybody listening yeah. would vote just one time. We would do pretty good. We would do excellent. Yeah. And, and look, we're not asking for the moon. We don't want to be number one. We don't, we're not even expecting to be in the top 10. I want to make the top 50. I think that would be cool. 49, that's yeah, where we want to be. Absolutely. So yeah. here's here's what we need you to do is click the link, and it's real simple. You see it right there. You just put your name, you put your email, and then right there where podcast one is, you type in Steve and Bethany's Hopecast, hosted by Steve and Bethany. And then at the bottom there, you just click, you just click submit. You yeah. click vote. That's all it is. We really want you to step up and do this for us because we're trying to build a community. Mm -hmm. We're trying to build uh, something, and we can't do this on on our own. We need your help to do it. So we'd love for you to get involved and love for you to help spread the word. Because, look, the best way our podcast is going to grow and we're going to be able to influence people is by you Telling your friends. Yeah. That's the way it Really goes. just kind of spreading the word and, and yeah, telling your friends about us, but also voting and, and getting our name out there a little mm-hmm. bit more. Um, I mean, I would I don't want to say that this is more important than the actual election. Right. But it's up there. It's, I mean, at least close. top five of important elections to be a part of. It's yeah, something like that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And then and here's the thing is this comes out every month. Yep. So we could grow this. We could start moving up the charts like a mm-hmm. like a song. We're gonna be like know? number one before long. So but yeah, uh, but honestly, if you'd love the show, we would appreciate you helping us out mm-hmm. and spreading the word about the show. And we're going to be having some cool goals coming up soon. We're going to be telling you about how you can help us reach goals, like for downloads and all that kind of fun stuff. We'll be getting to that soon. But while you were going to, again, a lot of prayer, a lot of time thinking, mm-hmm. a lot of meditation, a lot of trying to figure out what to do. And we have our online store and we've sold some t-shirts and stuff. It's been nice. Yeah. But I got to thinking, how can we make the online store better? What can we do to be able to influence you listening and watching to to buy and do something that will actually make a difference mm-hmm. than just selling merchandise? Yeah. You know what I mean? So here's what I came up with. Our I know some folks at Bible League International, which is a wonderful ministry. And what Bible League International does is they provide Bibles for people around the world in their native language. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, they don't have a Bible These folks kind of fill the gap. So here's what we want to do. We want you to go to our website, stephenbethany.com, and purchase a T-shirt. We've got Mm -hmm. a couple of different designs up there, and every T-shirt you purchase equals one Bible bought. That's all it takes. Yeah. And it's super easy because really, you know, this is something that is kind of a, a twofold. You know, you get an awesome t-shirt and you also get to share the gospel with somebody in another language and, and grow the good news of Jesus. That's yeah. what it's all about. Absolutely. So go to stephenbethany.com. Mm-hmm. We're calling it T-shirts for Bibles. Again, very creatively very creative. titled. We've spent a lot of time on that. And so we want you to, to participate in that. We want to see this grow mm-hmm. because we'll make the donation in your name. So that'll be kind of cool, kind of fun, so that you will 
I mean, this could change eternity, right. really, when you think about right. it. If you buy a, a silly little T-shirt from StephenBethany.com, and then somebody gets a copy of the Bible in their native language and comes to Christ, mm. they're going to come to Christ because you bought a T-shirt from yeah. a podcast. <laughs> yeah. You know? How yeah. great would that be? And, too, when you're wearing T-shirts that are from the, the podcast, you know, you're able to start conversations with people where they're kind of like, okay, hope dealer, what does that yeah. mean? And, and you're able to share. So there's a lot of benefits to buying and, a T-shirt. And share not only, you know, not only about this, but this T-shirt bought a Bible. Right, You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. that's awesome. Again, you can find... Um, the links of how to buy a t-shirt at stevenbethany.com. So please check it out and please buy buy a t-shirt, buy 10. Yeah. This is going to be phenomenal. I'm so excited. I can't believe I came up with this idea. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm it's proud such of a, you. It's such a good idea. It is such a good idea. How did I come up and with it? And they say that there are no original I ideas know. left well, in well, radio. I'm sure, well, look, I'm sure that Somebody's done it already. I'm sure somebody has done it already. <laughs> But I was so proud. I was like, I'm God, very proud this of This is a God thing because I couldn't have done this on my own. So I'm proud anyway, of you, Stevie. so please, stephenbethany.com. Okay, so as we mentioned, you know, for three weeks we yeah. haven't like been able to see one another. You have been out in Texas. I've been in Tyler, Texas. And um oh, The that, Piney okay. Woods of East Texas. The Piney Woods, that reminds me. I'm gonna airdrop a picture to you, Jarvis Jr., so we can get the full effect of what I was doing in oh, okay. Tyler, Texas. Let me airdrop this real quick. Great people at KV and E Radio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. So Encouragement Media Group is kind of the parent company. And then I was with um, KVNE and Lift Worship and The Well, which is their teach talk station. And then they also have uh, Fusion, which is their Spanish Christian station. It's not Fusion. wanting to air. Yeah, it's not What's wanting that to mean? airdrop. That makes me sad. Is that a group picture? Yeah, it's a group picture. I can Okay. Well, anyways, it was really fun to be a part of it. They asked me to come down and basically help them fundraise because mm -hmm. they are listener supported. They have four radio stations that they need to keep on the air. And so twice a year they do fundraising and it was nine days of fundraising, which is a lot. Um, a lot of talking and a lot of coffee was consumed by me. But it was super fun to be a part of it. The group down there is awesome. They are very ministry focused. And so um, I, I think that was what kind of what stood out to me the most is that it seems like they're a radio station second, but a ministry first. Mm -hmm. That's where their focus is at. Um, and everybody on staff, of course, was so welcoming, so kind. And I just had an absolute ball. Like well, it was so much fun. I'm, I'm so glad you did because... This was the first time you'd done something like this. I mean, yeah. when you and I yeah. worked together uh, at the radio station in Little Rock, yeah. um, we would have international ministries come by, and we would fundraise for right. them. Because for, we were a commercial station, right. what we were on. So we played commercials to make money, but these nonprofits would come in, and we would, For you know, a day. Yeah, two help days, them fundraise. For, yeah. for a couple of days. And so it's exhausting because you're, yeah. you're can't till can't, but... <laughs> Nine full days. Holy cow. Yeah. And and they were very, very full days. I mean, I was on from basically six to six. I had some breaks in between there, but it was a full day for sure. A lot of fundraising and, um, and yeah, really, really sweet people. We had a ton of fun and it just oh, there they are. Like, yeah. So there's the whole crew there. So I'm right here. And then these people up front, they're from uh, Fusion, the Spanish station. And then what uh, does Fusion mean? I think it means fusion. Oh, okay. I think. But they realized this, so this is kind of like a joke that they just all thought was hilarious, and then they shared it with me, which I was very happy about. Um, this girl right here in the front, her name's Natalia, and she kept on saying, she goes, um, we were encouraging people to, you know, partner with us. Well, in Spanish, con, I guess, means with. Mm -hmm. And so she was saying, you know, confusion. Confusion. Right. Confusion is what it slowly morphed into. And she, of course, you know, English is her second language. So she's saying this, but then the English speaking side of her brain is going, that's confusion. <laughs> right. That's what that <laughs> word is. So she shared with me, she goes, I realized I've been saying confusion on the air. And I was like, you're fine. Don't worry about it. We know what you mean. We know what you mean. Oh, bless um, my heart. That's but they great. were just an awesome group of people, really fun. And then some people from donor development and um, a couple people from Lift Worship. Do you see the guy in the basement? Cap, the white I see baseball that guy, cap. Yeah. I was on with him in the mornings. The girl in the baseball cap down there. I was with her in the afternoons. Um, yeah, just a really great group of people. Super fun to be with. Well, that's cool because there's a lot of Christian radio, lots of great people in Christian radio all mm -hmm. across the country. But this group in particular has Some had of the a best. reputation. I mean, I've heard great things about them since way before I was even in Christian radio. Yeah, so yeah. They're they're the top notch well, real deal. So. And I think that's what's cool is when you're able to build that reputation where even in secular markets, secular radio mm -hmm. stations know that you're 
you're great. Like you're, you have a good reputation and you're good people. And, um, and this group is definitely good people. <laughs> well, so do you want to know how I pass the time besides praying a lot about the cop podcast while you were gone? What do you do? Cause I was, I missed you tremendously. I was like, did a, you miss me? I was like, a, I was like a little puppy dog. <laughs> okay. When's Bethany coming back? Okay. I actually kind of did think that, um, you were maybe a little jealous that I was with another guy in the <laughs> on the morning show because he, you kept on texting me and you were like, what's he like? Well, no. What's his personality like? Is he good? All this stuff and I said are you jealous well listen well listen first of all I have been in radio 25 years uh-huh. okay look it's not that I'm I have insecurity problems it's how big are the insecurity <laughs> problems that's all of that's radio everybody people. in radio that's yeah. everybody in radio so no but no seriously I did I I, I found the app that, you, that uh-huh, they had yeah. and, and was able to listen did I do and okay so, you did okay yes, I did you okay did good you did all right good. so I, I, tried. I was really I was like my little birdie has flown the nest <laughs> But no, so but seriously, I was, I was, I was so proud. <laughs> the house that Steve built. That's, that's right. What it is. That's right. So um, while while you were gone, I I was doing some reading and I came across this uh, article about Christians and not being offended. Mm-hmm. And it was called, I think it was just simply called unoffendable. And it was making some points about how we as Christians shouldn't be offended by what people that aren't Christians do and say. Okay. And, and I, it really kind of struck me because, huh. and I still, even sitting here, I wonder about that. I wonder if that's, if that's exactly right or not, because there were some, there mm-hmm. were some points that were being made that, Hey, look, basically saying they're lost people and lost people are going to do what lost people do. Mm-hmm. We can't expect them to do things and say things and act a certain way that we would hold like a church Follow, our right. Christ follower that goes to church with us. Right. You know? And I thought that, that I agreed with that. And I, I got me to thinking about something that happened at the radio station. We started, you and I, a thing when we were together on the radio about, and we called it Only God Mondays. Yeah, yeah. Hearing well, stories from people of how God is moving in their life mm-hmm. and sharing it on the air. Yeah. Well, I, I brought it back, and now that I'm doing the mornings by myself, and... um which, by the way, if you want to know the whole story behind that, you can uh, check it out. Yeah, in, in the, one archives. Of the archives. Yeah, if you're a Patreon member, <laughs> right? A Patreon member. But anyway, I, I got to thinking about it, and I started thinking uh, through the Only God Mondays. I remember a guy had called in one time, and he went through this whole long story about being at a Mexican restaurant and how he they just sit there and they prayed and about they needed salt on the chips. And anyway, basically he was just mocking the whole little set. So he just called in to make fun. Basically, He was calling in to make fun and and, anybody was doing it in a way he didn't let in on a joke. He wasn't like overt about it. He was, Mm -hmm. but he kept on and kept on and kept on. And I just remember thinking this guy is just, he's just a jerk trying to mess with him. But then I thought, you know, I'm not going to let this offend me. I'm not Mm going to let this bother me. After he was done going through his whole thing, I just said, well, thank you for calling. Appreciate it. And Mm -hmm. and just hung up. And and you didn't didn't. play that on the air. Well, no, I didn't play it on the air. (laughs) And I just, I just kind of let it go. But I, but when I, I remembered that after reading this article and I got to thinking, you know, unoffendable, how, how does that look in our daily lives? Should we be offended by stuff as Christians? You know? I mean, I think yes. I think there's definitely certain things that that should bother well, us as Christians. Well, yeah. there was there was one piece of scripture that he used that I that I thought you know it, where it says, um, "Be angry, but do not mm-hmm. sin." Yeah. Now think about it. How many times do we allow things to offend us? And we get mad and at make stuff, us, yeah. and it becomes sin. Yeah. We start gossiping. We yeah. start talking bad about a person, or we—I mean—a whole lit- litany of things, tearing yeah. down someone's character. Yeah, the whole deal. That that stuff's not right, you know. Yeah, that's so, a good point. So, where's if is there a line? Are we supposed to not be mad? At anything that happens, you know, it really kind of started me thinking well, a lot. That's something that I've never really even heard anybody say before, too, is that we're not supposed to be offendable, basically. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I yeah. haven't read the article, but I'm guessing that's what it says, right. basically. But yeah, that's what it gets down yeah, to. Yeah, I've never really heard that brought up, but I have heard, you know, that you need to have grace with people and show mercy, mm-hmm. which is very true. Um, but how many times, let's just be honest. Let's yeah. be how many times do we do that? Like I did with the guy on the radio station, mm-hmm. he calls in, makes fun. 
And I say, oh, okay, thanks for calling. In my mind, though, You're I'm like, like, this is a jerk, and yeah. he's trying to mess with me. I'm well, wasting time, wasting and I've, got, time. I've yeah. got other callers that are serious yeah. that are trying to get in, and he's taking up all my time doing right. this. And I'll, Because, you know, Jesus said, you don't have to do the action <laughs> if you think the action. That's yeah. just, that equals guilt. Well, and there's been two, times, too, where, you know, if something has happened that's frustrated me, where somebody has, has done me wrong or just irritated me in some way, I feel better when I talk about it. Mm-hmm. So I'll go and be like, okay, you did not, you would not believe what happened to me today. This person was such a jerk. Like, that's, that's the reality. That's yeah. how I'll process through something. And that's something that I've been convicted on is, okay, am I sugarcoating gossip or sugarcoating my own sin and irritation with, well, this is just how I need to process something that frustrated me. I need to verbalize kind it. Of like justifying it, right? Right, yeah, kind of justifying how I'm speaking about someone. And and I think where I fall into it is I'm a verbal verbal processor, so I'm figuring things out as they're coming out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. That's how I <laughs> that's how I process. And um and so that's something that I've had to really contend with is like, okay, how do I process in a healthy way, but also not cross the line into just ripping into somebody and, you know, criticizing someone that ultimately, no matter how big of a jerk they might be, they're made in the image of God. Right. They have value and I need to treat them as such, even if they did irritate me or annoy me that day. All right. We'll talk more about this coming up. We got to slide away. We're long in this segment, but we'll come back with more of this discussion about can you be offended or not mm-hmm. as a Christian? Hey guys, so if you've been listening to the Hopecast for really any amount of time, you've probably heard us talk about Pat Davis. It's yourhealthplanman.com, yourhealthplanman.com. Pat is a regular listener to the Hopecast. He's been so supportive of us since day one, but he's also really passionate about putting people back in control of their healthcare because oftentimes when you think about health insurance, it's very, you know, monotone kind of cookie cutter. Everything looks the same. You pay a ton of money up front. And then it seems like the insurance company just kicks in what they can. But with Pat Davis, it's totally different. Yeah, it really is. I mean, think about this. Think about saving 30 to 50% on your monthly premiums, having low to no deductibles to pay, and then no copay. Zip, zero, nada. It sounds too good to be true. It really does. Plus, (laughs) how about this? You get paid to go to the doctor. Crazy. Because this is the way this works. I actually am a customer of Pat Davis. And um, like like Bethany said, he's been a believer in this podcast since day one. That's Mm -hmm. the reason he's here is because he loves the the idea behind the mission of what we're trying to do. And he wants to help you with your health care. He set me up with a customized plan for me and my family. And I went to the doctor as $76, not a bad doctor's visit. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then I got a check back from the insurance company for $180. So that's Crazy. the bill paid in yeah. full plus a little extra for my time, you yeah. know, or whatever. So yeah. it's Gas so money neat. To get there, yeah, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> it's so neat. And you think this is too good to be true. Well, it's not. And, and something Pat wanted us to pass along, um, you know, a lot of people talking about COVID right now right. And, and a lot of stuff with pre-existing conditions. Well, look, COVID is not a pre-existing condition. So if you're diagnosed with that and whatever else is said, mm-hmm. just know that COVID is not going to be considered pre-existing. If right. you talk with Pat, what you'll find out is as soon as you get a negative test from COVID, if you happen to have tested positive for it, then once once you get a negative test, you're all done. You're mm-hmm. ready to go. So no pre-existing condition with that. So don't worry about that. But Pat Davis wants to sit with you and talk with you about how you can get off this crazy merry-go-round of sky high premiums, endless deductibles and copays yeah. all the time. You can change that. And especially now we're getting to the autumn months. Mm-hmm. That's when everybody starts reing up uh, for their healthcare at yeah. work and different yeah. kind of things. Look, just give Pat 15 minutes of your time. Well, cause really that's all it costs is just your time mm-hmm. up front. And if it's not going to work for your family, no harm, no foul. Yeah, Pat's all about that. No if, problem. If his is, if he, he'll look at your thing and say, look, man, you're getting the best deal. Well, well, they'll leave it right there. Yeah. But he can save you some money. He can help you out. Just give him a chance. He'll schedule a time around your schedule. It's all at one place. Yourhealthplanman.com. That's yourhealthplanman.com. Okay, so we're continuing our conversation about can a Christian be offended? Mm-hmm. You know, and I do. I think you use a good term about sugarcoating things. We, we tend to say, oh, well, I have every right to do that. And again, when we start talking about being a Christian, yeah, we lay down our rights a lot of times. Right, yeah, we, Paul we're talks supposed about to. That a lot. Yeah. yeah, 
I think that, you know, it's, it's hard because yes, there are certain things that are going to be offensive to Christians. I think for me, when I hear somebody, you know, use the Lord's name in vain, Mm -hmm. I don't appreciate that. And that bothers me. Um, but, am okay, I, is but, it going to prevent me from talking to them? No, because when they say that, I'm assuming, okay, well, they probably don't know Jesus mm-hmm. Jesus if they're talking like that. So that's not going to stop me from engaging with them in conversation or being their friend. Um, because here's, But here's the thing, though. There's so many people yeah. that I know that would be righteously upset. They would say, okay, look, this person's saying these words – my family's here. We're at a ball game. Yeah. And they're saying these words I can't enjoy. And all of a sudden, that almost becomes self-righteous, I think, a lot of times. Because yeah. you're right. Yeah. You're right. That person doesn't know Jesus. They're acting that way. Now, should we not say something if it bothers us? Maybe we should. Maybe we should say, hey, sir, madam, your your, your language, I've got my family here. Would right. you please yeah. mind? Yeah. Could, but you never know what's going to happen with that. They may get even angrier. <laughs> or Now, I do remember one time... Uh, Years ago, a music pastor, when I was a kid, he took his family to a ball game, and uh, he he confronted the guy. And this guy was just really wiry. I mean, he was just yeah. a little, little guy. I mean, and he yeah. went up to this big like burly guy. Be in a fight. Yeah, yeah. He went up to this big burly guy and said, sir, I'm here with my family, and I don't appreciate the language that you're using. And the guy shut it down. He, yeah. he was sorry. But that doesn't always happen. Well, that's true. I, I just, I do think though that regardless of how you handle it or your uh, the outcome of it, you're going to feel what you feel. Like, I think when something happens, there is that reaction of, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's going to bother you. Sure. Like, there's something that happens that just stirs in you and you're like, okay, that's not right. That's offensive, I think, to the Holy Spirit. And, and I think something like language or just something happening can stir in you that feeling of, that's not right. That bothers me. Mm-hmm. But I think also as believers, we're called to live at peace with people. And so we are called to, to seek peace, to pursue it, to um, make right with people if we need to. Right. How we go about that can look differently. Um, I, do, I do think that as Christians, you know, we're not supposed to look like jerks out there. <laughs> and I mean, and there's a lot of times where Christians do get a bad reputation because they go about um, confronting someone in a way that's not right a way that's way too strong that's you know accusing them and and just comes across really harsh I think there's a a nice way a kind way to go about things but um I I don't believe that being a Christian means that you are just immune to being offended by things I just think it's about how you handle it that's Mm -hmm. the difference for me at least I I think that you have a responsibility to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and um and, and, you know, if, if something's happening that you feel like is wrong, I think you should, you know, speak up and say something, but it is about picking your battles and looking at that person and thinking, okay, do they know Jesus for one? Because if they know Jesus and they're behaving in a way that's not, you know, reflecting of a Christian, then I think you do have a responsibility to, to say something. If they're not a Christian, okay, you can, you can let it slide and you can become their friend and just, and just kind of start conversation in a more organic way. Or you can confront them, but again, in a way that's not aggressive and not like, how are, you know, how are you acting? Because honestly, they don't know better. If Christians, or if they're not believers, you know, they don't know better or they don't, they're not going to act like a Christian would. No, I agree. I think, I think that's uh, the heart of the matter is the the difference, whether that person in your estimation knows Jesus or yeah. doesn't. If they come to church with you and they proclaim salvation and proclaim a, a Christ follower, then all of a sudden that changes the, right. the dynamic yeah. for yeah. sure. But I do think a lot of times we could go in back to a ball game analogy because that's mm-hmm. where you hear it a lot of times, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. You hear somebody going on with the language, it can turn into self-righteousness for us. Well, mm-hmm. I was at a game, and you know, poor pitiful me, I was, my little ears and my little, my family's ears had to be mm-hmm. infected by this yeah. horribleness. And it just becomes a a whole woe is me kind of thing. And I don't Mm -hmm. think that that's what God wanted. You know, and and reading and uh, continuing to kind of dig into this topic a little bit, I came across a a quote from uh, Adrian Rogers, who uh, was just an amazing pastor in Memphis. Mm -hmm. And um, he was always someone and still is uh, someone who I, I I will go to and look back on things he said because he always made complex things so simple he could take the most deep theological issue and just 
explain it. And you're like, oh, well, of course. That's, that's exactly what that, what that means. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Well, he said, going back to that verse I uh, uh, referenced earlier, to be angry but sin not, mm-hmm. he said what you have to do is be angry only at sin. Yeah. Be angry that the person took the Lord's name in vain. Be angry that the person is using the F-bomb, whatever. But don't let that become sin in your life. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that's really pretty good. Yeah. That kind of explains it all. Yeah. And I think that kind of can coexist with being not offended mm-hmm. because we're laying down our rights, but yet we are sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit. Well, so a, a good example of this, since we're kind of on the language analogy, that's yeah. kind of the route we're, we're going. So my brother is a chef. He's in a kitchen. The language that's in a kitchen in a restaurant is pretty intense. I can imagine. He's around that. He's been around that. He's been a chef now for, goodness, you know, seven, eight years. So he's he's been in a lot of different kitchens, around a lot of different types of people, and has heard a lot of different words. And the one thing that he has said kind of does make him stick out a little bit is that he doesn't use those words. He doesn't say those things. And um, he's in leadership. He's the executive sous chef at the restaurant he's at right now. So he's setting the bar, setting the example. He doesn't say those things. That makes him stand out. And I think, um, you know, in, in that vein, people notice when you don't say something. And so there's been a lot of times where people have been like, okay, you're not angry mm-hmm. like my other chef was. Right. You don't say the same things that my other chef did. You're not acting the, the way that other people do normally, especially in a kitchen mm-hmm. <laughs> at a restaurant. And um, and then, you know, I, I think it's just cool that my brother has been able to, to set the example without really saying a whole lot because there's a lot of things he's not saying. But in some ways, that says more. Absolutely. You know, kind of, I- Kind of setting the example there. I couldn't agree more. So we don't want this to be a lecture. We no. want this to be a conversation. So we want to hear from you. Yeah. How how do you handle it? Do you think Christians can be offended? And is it right mm-hmm. for us to be able to to be offended? Maybe you think we're not we're not hitting it right. We're missing it. Let us know. Oh, we would for love, sure. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll put it in the comments down here. Whether you're listening on the podcast audio or watching the YouTube video. Let us know what you think. How would you handle situations? How do you handle situations that come up like this, whether it's language or something else? Well, because I really do think that's what it's all about. That's kind of the bottom line here is that we're always going to face situations that could offend us, that could be bothersome. It's kind of about picking our battles and then deciding as Christians, how are we going to respond to this person that has offended us or bothered us? Okay, we want to jump in here just for a second and tell you about a brand new sponsor yeah. for Stephen Bethany's Hopecast. And I'm so excited about this because this is, just like Pat Davis, another listener mm-hmm. that got in touch with us. She does commission artwork. Her name is Madison, and she has Creations by Madison. I want you to, if you're watching on YouTube, look at some of this stuff that she's, uh, she, puts, she puts out. She's multi-talented. Like it's not just one particular kind of artwork that she does. She really does a wide variety of things and incredibly talented. This one, I think that's like pencil mm-hmm. pen kind of thing, but she's done oil paintings and she's just done more abstract stuff. Really, really incredible. I mean, look at that. It's awesome. So it, cool. it really is. Those of you that are listening, you can see all of her paintings mm-hmm. at stephenbethany.com. And the reason why we've brought her aboard is because it's getting the holiday season. Right. And who wants to give the same old gifts all the time? How many times do you say, what am I going to get my mom? What am I going to get my sister? What am I going to get my grandmother? Mm-hmm. Think about a painting. I mean, it could be of a landscape, maybe one some special place that's in that person's life. Yeah. Maybe a beloved pet, like you could get Gus. I could get immortalized. my mini dachshund. Yeah. Yes, you could get him <laughs> immortalized in, a, in an oil painting and, and so many more. I mean, the sky's the limit as far as creativity. Also, my aunt does this, and I think this is a really cool idea. She's moved quite a bit. So for every house that she's lived in, she's gotten a watercolor painting of that house with like the address underneath it, just as a little way to remember the, that time in their life and where they lived. So that's another cool idea is if you had a picture maybe of your childhood home or if you're moving a lot and you want to kind of remember each place that you've lived, get a watercolor painting. Yeah, absolutely. Madison can take care of it all. And mm-hmm. she'll work with you every step of the way. And she wants to provide this service because she does this amazing art and she wants to put it in the hands yeah. of other Stephen Bethany listeners. So this is such a great idea, especially guys, listen, your mom, 
your 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 grandmother, your wife, your sister, your aunt. You're going to get waterworks, I think, this holiday season. This <laughs> is going to be such a great gift. You're going to yeah. get so many brownie points for this. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a – because this is so unique. I so mean, unique, it yeah. Is not, it's not like anything else they're going to get. They're going to be proud to hang this in their house mm-hmm. and tell people when they come over, hey, look, my brother got this for me. My 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 husband had this done for yeah. me. Yeah. You know, such a cool idea. You can find all the details of how you can get in touch with Madison. It's Creations by Madison at our website, stephenbethany.com. Just click on the banner there that's on the homepage. Get in touch with Madison. You worked with her again. It takes just a few weeks to turn everything around. She'll make sure you're 100% satisfied, mm-hmm. and it'll be the best gift you'll give this year. So again, stephenbethany.com, stephenbethany.com, and then click the little tab that says Creations by Madison. Okay, before we wrap things up and call it an episode here today, we want to remind you that uh, our cornhole game yeah. from some more listeners that are uh, Chippeway from Chippeway Custom Woodworks. Mm-hmm. Chip, uh, Chip and Wade, yeah. two friends. <laughs> Chip Hurd and Wade McLean, they are amazing. They do a lot of good work, and they have got us a customized regulation cornhole game. Maybe Bago, where you're from. Yeah, kind of depending on where you're from, you may call it something else, but we call it cornhole. And mm-hmm. here's the thing. You can really put anything you want on it. You yep. can do, like, your favorite sports team. You could do your family's, uh, like, crest if you wanted to. Or oh, just yeah. your last name on there. If you're getting married anytime soon, maybe put your new last name or something. And that's Lots actually, of ideas. Actually, some friends of mine did that exact same oh, thing. Oh, really? They just got married. Very cool. They, that was one of the things that Chip Away gave them. Uh, as far as a wedding present goes. Yeah, I like so that. um and they'll ship it wherever in the world you mm-hmm. live. So if you're listening to us in Canada, we got a lot of Canadian listeners, which mm-hmm. we're so proud of. Australia, also Australia Europe and anywhere. in Europe. <laughs> we have a lot of people in Europe. In fact, we have one listener in France that has been here since like day one. We I kinda want to know who you are. Yeah, I don't know if they're like a missionary that speaks, you know, speaks English and is mm-hmm. we're like a little yeah. bit of home or whatever. Yeah. I would we would love to hear from you. So you know who you are. Because I think it's about the only city I in think, France. I think so. So you know who you are. So get in touch with us, please. We would love to We would love to say hi to you. Yeah. But anyway, wherever in the world you're listening to us, you can win this. Just go to stephenbethany.com because in two weeks, we're going to call the winner right here mm-hmm. on the Stephen Bethany Hopecast. So, so sure. stephenbethany.com, go sign up. Yeah, sign up right now. And coming up here uh, as we get ready to wrap things up. Look, I noticed, see how I did that? I went from one <laughs> camera to the other just like a professional. And I don't even have a floor director. How awesome was that? That was good, wasn't it, Jarvis? I did good. It's like the little victory. Oh, for you. that was good. Those listening have no idea what I'm talking about. They don't care. Once, yeah, they don't. They don't care. They, they, don't, they care. don't care. Move on past it, Steve. <laughs> but, um, but, but coming up for for those of you on Patreon, our aftercast will get started here in just a second. And with all the election season coming up, or that, coming up, we're in the middle of it here, mm-hmm. almost to the very end here in the United States. I have a story about actually campaigning and doing my part for a candidate that I thought was worthwhile. Wow. That I was so proud to do my okay. civic duty and then it just it, it, it just turned out terrible. Blew it up just, in your face. It just kind well, it just kinda yeah. It just kinda did. <laughs> so well, that story's coming up in the aftercast exclusively for our patrons at Patreon. You're looking at the wrong com. camera again. So well okay see I can't do it every time. <laughs> I'm not going to do it every time, but uh, at uh, patreon.com slash Stephen Bethany's Hopecast, right. the aftercast will get started here in just a minute. Yeah, that's right. So I guess that wraps up episode 25, Yeah, right? and you know what? We ha- we don't do credits. I was listening to other podcasts. They give like credits. You know, like... Um, like, like thanks to Jarvis Jr.? Thanks to Jarvis Jr. for being our production. You know, yeah. like Jarvis Sr. lets us tape here. Right, you know? yeah. And, and we thank you for watching. And... This, this episode is fact-checked by absolutely no one. Absolutely no one. We don't even know what we're saying. 